This river, the Colorado, can be turned on and turned off, down to the last drop, on orders from the Interior Secretary of the United States. This was the first river on Earth to come under complete human control. The only river in a thousand miles of desert so hot and dry that men have died from thirst within sight of its banks. Today, 30 million people depend on the waters of the Colorado. This is the story of how that came to be. Las Vegas isn't supposed to be here. No one dreamed there would ever be a Las Vegas on the Colorado River. That in this stark, barren desert, people would actually want to live and develop a community and build a city in it. People don't come to Las Vegas because they've carefully analyzed our water supply. They come here because the economic potential is there. We have the jobs and we keep building mega resorts on the Strip. I mean, one hotel is 10,000 jobs. And we have a vibrant economy, we pay no taxes, gaming is footing the bill for us, and we found paradise. You're going to notice a lot of swimming pools as we fly along. I like to think it's out of, out of self-defense. We occasionally have temperatures out here, 120, 125 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of gated communities and lake communities seem to be the fashion here in the last few years. You're also going to be noticing a lot of new homes under construction. There is now and has been a housing boom going on here in the valley for about the last six or seven years. Las Vegas is only one of a dozen cities feeding on the Colorado. Here it rains three inches a year, about the same as in Egypt. Every week, a thousand people move to Las Vegas, and each of them will use 350 gallons of cool, clear water every day. Why are you in the desert? You shouldn't even be in the desert. If you people would just send everybody away, you wouldn't have this problem. If you'd like this kind of growth in your community, have at it. All these people have to go somewhere in this country. The Colorado River is, is the lifeblood of the Southwest. Without the Colorado, without a stable water supply, the Southwest would not look anything like it does. Without water, without flowing water. All these desert places that we have settled and made populous uh, are really, really unbearable environments. It all began in 1857 when Joseph Christmas Ives ran a steamboat up to the desolate spot where Las Vegas now stands. Stopped by rapids, he said, the Colorado River shall be forever unvisited and undisturbed, and turned back. But in 1869, John Wesley Powell set off down the mysterious river. His was the last great scientific expedition inside the United States, entering the last part of the West unpenetrated by whites. The river Powell explored was wild and muddy. Well, you have to give him credit. One arm going down that river didn't know a thing about it. They had no idea whether they'd find waterfalls, the kind of rapids they'd run into. And I remember the first time I went down and I had to worry about whether that roar I heard in the distance was a waterfall of 100 feet or just a little rapid. We now administer the Colorado in a great system of waterworks, but in a few places, it sometimes runs wild, as Powell found it. Powell was a keen, skeptical observer, determined to learn whether Americans could realistically settle the land along the Colorado. Fed by snowmelt and rare, violent storms, it was America's siltiest river and one of the world's warmest. No river on Earth had cut such canyons. The river was tempestuous, willful, headstrong. It would flow at the flow of, of the Mississippi at low water in a, a little canyon, really. I mean, the Grand Canyon is huge, but the actual river bed is small. 
And this river would rise 70 feet. It ran wild for two or three months every year, and it would get down to a trickle in, uh, in August and September. The fluctuations on the Colorado River is, is amazing. It's just not a very predictable river. It was an outlaw river, and we, we couldn't let it not be regulated. And that's why I think it wasn't just that it was the only significant river in the Southwest, but that it was so willful. This nature that we say we love wild, we really like it quite well regulated. And we went after the uh, Colorado River with a kind of a special vengeance. Powell questioned whether the river could be controlled, whether it could water the arid west, and whether it could be fairly divided. Americans have bitterly debated the Colorado ever since. This year, Reclamation Commissioner Dan Beard is running the river with 30 people, all of whom lay some claim to its waters. Who wants this river? Yeah. Everyone wants this river. Everyone in the southwestern United States and northwestern Mexico. You know, as you flow down here, it's hard to realize, but this river is really supplying Phoenix, Tucson, providing a substantial amount of the, of the water supply for Southern California, Southern Nevada, provides substantial habitat for all kinds of aquatic life. Uh, there's a lot of people competing for this river. When I was born in 1912, there were no dams in the Colorado River. It was a wild river all from start to finish. They thought it was all right, I think, for rivers to run to the ocean. That was, that was their idea, and it was probably a good one. There was a, a cry practically nationwide to control the wild, raging, rampant Colorado River that flooded the Yuma Valley and the, uh, all the irrigation land down there. It flooded it every year, without question. It, it, it was just, there needed to be some control structure on the Colorado to, to stop those devastating annual floods. For all its fury, the Colorado was a small river, only a thirtieth the flow of the Mississippi. But it was the biggest river in a thousand miles of desert. In 1922, Herbert Hoover convened western states to divide the river's water. Half was claimed by the mountain states, where the rain and snow fell, and half by the desert states, where most of the farms and cities would be. Never would such a river be asked to do so much. But the compact reserved no water for Native Americans, and little for Mexico. Within a year, Bureau of Reclamation Surveyors had located dozens of dam sites. The prime dam site was in a remote canyon called Glen. But the Bureau, under fierce pressure from California congressmen, chose instead the Narrows of Black Canyon, 300 miles closer to the exploding population of Los Angeles. The first great dam would be here, a few miles from the tiny village of Las Vegas. Hoover Dam to me was a, uh, a spectacle that uh, unbelievable that, that man could, uh, could build it to start with. No dam that size could be built. People didn't know how to do it, who would pay for it. It was a huge leap into the realm of the unknown. No one had ever before stopped a river of this size. Hoover Dam would stop floods, irrigate farms, generate low-cost power for homes and factories. It would be bigger than the Great Pyramid of Egypt, three times as tall as the Statue of Liberty.